I'm back. <laughs> so while we were on Retix, I just thought let me pull out um, this beautiful big girl here. This is this is my tiger lavender albino. She is a nice big 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 female. Well, I mean she's half the size of what she's gonna get to. She's about between 10 and 11 feet. Okay. Try and stand back a little bit to try and get a, an idea of how long she is. Um, I did pull her out last time and I didn't get a chance to pull out the golden child, which you've just seen because the golden child was in shed, but this girl's bigger. She's a lot more chilled, she's a lot more relaxed. Maybe she's a lot bigger. Um, but absolutely love this girl. I mean, just look at, look at the size, look at the thickness, look at the coloring on this girl. And she's just a, she's a real sweetheart until she takes a bite out of you. But she's actually a very, very, um, she's a very, uh, so far so good. I've had no, no issues with this girl. Um, let me put on a light show quickly, just so that there's maybe a bit of better, get some better coloring. Sorry about the camera shaking. It's quite difficult to get these snakes to cooperate. You see how I put my hand up there to protect my face? It's only because it's a heat source and while I'm breathing, um, you know, is there's, I've got, there's two retics which are new to my collection. And when I say new, I mean six months, and that's this one and the one I showed before which I haven't had from yearlings. So I've established trust with the yearlings and that's why I let them come right up to my, um, notice how I get my arm out there very quickly, guys, so that I've always got a, um, a block between my neck and the snake con constricting me around my neck and getting me in a lock. Uh, you can, once, if you get, uh, wrapped around the neck with a, a, a reticulated part in this size. Um, I don't care if you six foot five and weigh 120 kgs and you are an MMA fighter, or maybe if you are an MMA fighter and you're used to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you could get yourself out of a lock. But this is 10 to 11 feet of pure muscle, and if they get around your neck five to eight seconds, you will be sleeping. And I know this because I did MMA and I know how easy it is to choke out somebody. And uh, she won't mean to do it. She'll just be doing it to hold on, but it'll cut the blood supply off to your brain. Next minute you'll wake up on the floor. If you do wake up because you haven't hit your head and she's let go, um, you could fall down and smash your head against something and there's no one to help you. Normally I don't handle um, my, my big girls and unless I've got somebody in the vicinity close to me, I am alone today, unfortunately, but I'm, I'm, I know this girl well enough to know that I'm not in any real danger. And I'm, I always, I can make a plan. Okay, so for the, for the new guys out there that are, uh, and I'm by no means an expert, guys, I'm, I'm an intermediate breeder. Um, you always have to be on your guard with uh, retics and anything nine, ten feet and above. Always be uh, very careful and always make sure that you that you don't let them wrap around you like a scarf. Always make sure that you've got at least one arm free at at all times, just in case they decide they're going to wrap you up. So let me see if I can if if, if I can almost. I, I wish I could get the whole size of her. Um, for you to see, because if I have to lay her out on the ground, she'd almost be twice, twice my, um, twice my height. And I'm six foot one, six foot one inches, and she's about eleven, so she's almost double my height. It doesn't look it because she's like folded over double, you know. But <sighs> trying, trying hard without putting her on the ground. I think the only way to do it, to really make a video to show you how big she is, is if I had to take her outside or into another room and have somebody else film while I, while I put her out on the ground and then we video her, you know, you know, crawling along the ground. But 
I'm not able to do that at the moment. So, so the best I can do is a, is a video like this just to, to show you, you know, this beautiful, this beautiful specimen of a snake here. Honestly, it, it, she's just stunning. The reason why I'm holding her today is like I'm holding all my retics uh, is because I like to hold them, socialize them. There's no point in keeping them uh, locked up in an enclosure their whole lives. They must get out. They must exercise. There's no point. I, I don't believe in just eating, sleeping, and breeding. Okay, I don't believe in that. I the ball pythons. Even I've got quite a lot of ball pythons. Nearly 200 ball pythons, I would say. And I um, I take them out and I hold them. It may not be for long, but I stretch them out and put them back in. And even though I breed them predominantly, the retics for me are a passion. The retics is just. A snake that I absolutely love. I've only got six. I've got two males and four females. Two of the females are going to be breeding ready next year. This is one. This is this is the girl that will more than likely breed. I'm I'm I'm, I'm not dabbling in it. But what I'm doing, I am going to be doing it properly, but I'm doing it very very slowly in the beginning. I, it's not like the ball pythons where I've got. 40 or 50 next year 80 females that will be breeding this year i paired up 40 next year i'll have about 80 that are up at size and it will be breeding the retics i'm gonna start off and just breed one maybe two females next year okay because they have anywhere between 20 and 80 eggs depending on the size not this one uh being 10 feet we might get 20 25 eggs out of her but as they get bigger and as they get older they will give you bigger and bigger clutches. So now you're breeding two, now you're sitting with 60, 70 eggs, hatchlings, and you've got to sell them. So I haven't really built up a name yet in the industry for retics. I'm still only really getting my name out there in the industry for ball pythons. Um, and that's what I'm predominantly breeding at the moment. And I am going to be doing the retics, but on a much smaller scale. I say that now, but who knows and what, what the future holds. You know, I may I may end up breeding retics on a larger scale. It's just that I live in a country where it's not like the United States, where these these snakes uh, sell. There's just so many more people in America that you know the, the retic market is much 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 bigger. Um, so it's harder to sell these snakes. Yeah, it's a very niche market. But I love them, and I do this. I do the retex as a passion. Uh, it's not everyone's cup of tea, but then, uh, then again, neither am I. Doesn't bother me. <laughs> I still love them. I still. Some people are dog people. Some people are cat people. Some people are snake people. And then there's retic people. And some people will. Some snake guys and I refuse to have retex. They won't have them. Uh, me, on the other hand, just. I'm fascinated by them. They are, they are so clever. They are so intelligent. They are so... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. I just, I just get, I just get such, a, such a joy and such a calmness from handling and, and just watching them. And they're just analyzing everything. You know, they're, just, they're in the snake room here and they can smell. They're out the enclosures and they can smell all the other snakes. They can smell all the new smells that are going on and they just want to investigate, you know. I can't wait to breed her. I can't wait to breed her. There's two possible males that she's going to go with. One is a motley het albino. Uh, got to prove out the het in him, although I know the breeder and I'm pretty sure he's 100% het. Um, but he's a motley, which is a, a, an incomplete dominant gene. And she's a tiger. Uh, visual lavender albino, so we'll get hopefully Motley Tiger albinos. Um, and if he's not, if he doesn't prove out, then he'll be, uh, then we'll get Motley Tiger hit albinos uh, or Tiger hit albinos or Motley hit albinos. Um, and then there is another male that I can pair to her. If he's up to size, he's a bit smaller. He is a Motley Perp, visual purple albino head titanium. The titanium doesn't mean anything because he's a head titanium. If I breed him to this, um, to this female. Oh, look at that. Um, let's see if I can stand far enough back here. You can just kind of get a, get a glimpse. I mean, she's wrapped 
right around me and I've got my arm fully extended and she's wants to go onto the floor. And the last time she did that, she got underneath one of my racks and it was an absolute mission to get it out. So, um, yeah, and then I have also got another female that I've got is a, um, for that motley purple albino head titanium, I've got a motley purple albino head titanium female. So when she hits four years old or five years old, I'm going to breed them together and produce motley titaniums. However, that's not about, that video is not about them. This video is about this girl. And her name, I like to name my snakes. I try to name them, I find a name, whatever gene they are. Like, for example, this one's a tiger lavender albino. I try and find a name that starts with T. So, because she's a tiger, her name is Tulula. <laughs> and the golden child that you saw earlier, because she's a golden child, that starts with a G, I call her Gabriella. It's just something stupid that I do. Um, but then there's also some other names that I give my snakes based on Greek mythology. Like, for example, my motley purple albino head titanium. His name is Asclepius, which is the Greek god of healing. The Greek, uh, yeah, so that's on, on your medical staff, you know, in the... Uh, in the medical profession, you see those uh, outside you know, drug pharmacies or hospitals, you see a staff, or a doctor or a nurse or an, a, a, a paramedic wearing these badges that have got a staff with a snake wrapped around it. That's actually the mythical god, uh, snake god of healing called Asclepius. And that's where that comes from. So, and then, you know, yeah, and then the rest of my ball pythons, you know, like I've named some of them after the, the breeders that I bought them from, you know, like I've got a desert ghost, one of my top desert ghosts here, I bought him from a guy by the name of Michael Jones, and his name is Mark. Uh, and then I've got another snake, his name's Ant. And then, uh, you know, so, so yeah, I just, I do things in a funny way. I don't give them all codes. I, I tried to do the code thing and it just, you know, don't want to go on too much about it but guys anyway i want to end off this video now we're hitting on 12 minutes just want to before because they're getting fed tonight and before they get fed i want to hold them and exercise them work them get them to move around uh, it's very important to give them stimulation um, and that's what i like to do and that's what i'm busy doing and i thought well let me just throw together a quick video and we'll see if we upload this to youtube uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to, we may, we may not, I don't know, I just sometimes I screw up these videos and I, I tongue tie things and I don't, or whatever, and it just doesn't come out right, but um, I don't know, if you're watching this, then maybe it did come out right, but anyway, guys, Tulula, my Tiger Lavender Albino, and I'm going to go put it back in her enclosure now, I hope you liked this video, if you did, and you want to see more content like this, then please, like and subscribe guys, the channel's almost growing, we're almost at 500, we've got about 494 or 495 people, we've just got a couple more to go before we hit 500, come on man, help me get there, <laughs> help me hit the 500 mark, anyway guys, that's it from me, Cole, North Coast Constrictors in South Africa, take it easy and enjoy the rest of your weekend.